are a fan, we don't have to tell you that video games are taking this country by storm. In 1980, Americans spent $3.3 billion playing video games. Some like a sport almost, parts of it. Coordination and development patterns. It lets you release some of your tensions. It you know, lets you think for a, minute, for a minute that you're a part of a spaceship destroying aliens that are attacking the Earth. Good just to sit down and not have to think for a while and just blow things up. This is a good way of taking out your aggressions without doing any harm. Hey, what's up, YouTube? So this is a no intro launch box build, and I'm going to be putting it on this brand new, to me, um, it's actually a used old Dell uh, desktop computer with, with integrated graphics, but it's got an i5 in it, and I'm just going to show you that these things are all over the place, and you can grab one and turn it into the perfect retro gaming machine. In this video, we're going to take a uh, 200 gigabyte launch box pre-built build, but also this should be help you in case you want to build it from scratch and some other options for you. So here it is, you got the processor, CD-ROM drive, eight gigabytes of RAM, you got the extra PCI slot in the back over here, power supply, another uh, fan here. Underneath is actually where the typical hard drive bay is, but this one's been upgraded to a 250 gigabyte um, solid state hard drive, and this is gonna really boost this thing up and bring it to life. Because um, the i5 is plenty fast for a lot of things. Um, and then the onboard graphics chip is probably a limiting factor, but a lot of emulation uses CPU and not GPU, so you're still going to see some really great performance um, in, in some more advanced systems. So let's go ahead and power this thing up and uh, give it a shot. And the only thing I, I forgot to mention was, um, it, you, typically on these motherboards you only have a network card, you'd need an, you might want to get a USB Wi-Fi adapter uh, or that PCI slot on there. Um, other than that, I mean, this thing is only, it's, you know, only 255 watts, so it's not a huge power sink. It's going to be quiet. It's sp small form factor comparatively, so it's got a lot of advantages. So let's go ahead and boot it up and check it out. All right, so with this SSD, we have 209 gigabytes after the um, operating system is installed. And on this hard drive here, I have a launch box build on it. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy this and uh, throw it on the main hard drive here. And this is about two gigs. And I'm sure I could just run this through the external hard drive, but I wanted to show you the performance of it on a solid state hard drive. So if you were to build one of these yourselves, you could totally um, you know, see exactly the performance you'd get as I'm doing a screen share here. So while that's processing, this should be USB 3.0 speeds. But when you're transferring this big of a file, it could take a while. Um, so once we get this started, the other thing I want to show you is about this computer. So let's go ahead and properties. Oops, I mean this PC properties. And so as you see, it's an i5-4570 at 3.2 gigahertz, 8 gigs of RAM. And... Um, It's got an Intel HD Graphics 4600. There's my SSD. Okay, so this is a 2013 release and a uh, pretty good score. Edit home movies, touch up pictures in Photoshop, a nice middle ground option. And uh, again, this is comparing it with that generation of, of CPUs. Um, so here's a little bit more. It could go up to 3.6 quad core, four threads. The uh, GPU clock speed is 350, but can, it can turbo up to 1,150. So this should be pretty good. And it is DDR3 memory in here for eight gigs. Um, and some other features for you. Physics score is really inaccurate. Okay, so <laughs> we'll see about that uh, shortly. Yeah, so you can get these for around, with the i5, around $200, $215, with Wi-Fi, though. And if you go on eBay, you get way better deals, I'm sure. Um, but you need to just make sure you're getting them from a reputable seller. Um, so there you go. This is about it. With no operating system, look at that. You can get it for under $150. 
So not bad. Um, eight gigs of RAM. This one is a 500 gigabyte hard drive, but these hard drives are gonna be slow. So what I might recommend is getting a um, a 250 gigabyte SSD. Oh, hey there, buddy. So, you know, I would probably go with something like this would be fine, like the Kingston for 40. So that's one I have, 53. Um, you have a few options. And I think even 500 gigabyte you can get for pretty cheap these days. Yeah, 80 bucks, 65. Well, I wouldn't go with that brand, but 80. So not bad. This brand's actually not bad. I've had it again, Mushkin. It's not bad. I've used them. All right. So this is still transferring. It's 174 gigs. So it's going to take up my whole, pretty much my whole hard drive. And then uh, we'll see how that, we'll see how that goes. In case you're wondering why I chose um, this LaunchBox build, it's because this is a pre-configured one that I found a while back that somebody created and a lot of the work was already done for me. You can absolutely just go to LaunchBox, go download the program, and then go find some ROMs on your own. There's also a lot of ROM packs out there where you can find the ROMs already set up for you. But um, as you see, when I load my LaunchBox here, it already has all the systems and games and emulators installed. But if you wanna go ahead and just start from scratch and add your own ROMs, it's super easy. Um, just use Google. A lot of websites out there, I know there were some that got hit not too long ago, but um, that's why I went with this because it was the easiest just drag and drop for me. The second way to do it is just build it from scratch. And then the third way here, as you can see, this is a Weird Dirty Gaming 250 gigabyte ROM pack. And these packs are all over the place, you know, and so this has, uh, you know, a few Dreamcast games, but for example, if you go to like SNES, it has all these Super Nintendo games for you. So what I would do is I would install LaunchBox on this PC and then just go ahead and drag and drop all these ROMs onto the hard drive here for the fastest boot time, or you could just leave them on an external drive like this, and just as long as you have the path correct, you just have the ROMs go to the, your, you know, your D drive or your E drive, whatever it is, and then they can go to your ROMs. It's an easy way. All of a sudden you can have all the Game Boy games, all your PSP games, you know, Video Pack, Wonder Swan, Sega 32X, Sega CD. You know, there's these packs all over the place, and I've done uh, videos on them in the past. Um, that'd be another way, but you still have to make sure you get all your paths right, set up the emulators. Um, so it's a nice little way if you want to customize it and not drag all the games. You can kind of go into NES and just pick the NES games you want, things like that. Um, you can see the box art is already here, so you might not need the premium version of LaunchBox. Um, but either case, as you see here, you guys have a lot of options as far as building out your perfect emulation machine. So the finishing touch here is to drop my license key here. Let's go ahead and update. All right, I think it add, uh, it updated it. Let's go to uh, Nintendo 64. I know this is regular NES. We can go smaller, right? Okay, bigger or smaller? Let's go small. So it takes a bit of time to load all this up, <clears throat> but it's actually not that slow. I had this on a way faster computer before and this is still pretty good. So what I did here is I went to LaunchBox, I went to Tools, Manage Emulators, and I added RetroArch. In order to do that, I just went over here, RetroArch, and um, you'll see here it says click here to download. I went over here to this website, and anyways, I went into Stable Builds, and then I went into the most recent version, and then I went into the Windows, and then 8664, and I downloaded the setup.exe. Um, once it was in my download directory, I just double click it, install it. I installed it into my LaunchBox No Intro emulators here, and then I went back into here, 
add emulator now that it was installed I would just go back to my C drive launch box emulators retroarch and there it is and press OK and then it'll ask you do you want this to be your primary um, emulator for all these systems and I said yes and uh, you can go ahead and double click this after the fact and then change the platforms that the ROMs that are going to be running on this the different um, systems and so now Nintendo 64 should load up with the RetroArch um, version. So GoldenEye 007, let's go ahead and load it up. Loading. And this build already has all your your stuff on Loading it. Complete. Actually, I want to check my, my, my volume's not too high. Okay. And uh, you can turn on and off bezels very easily. I mean, look how good this runs. And this is running on a Windows PC with over four, it has like six USB ports on it. You can add additional ports. So playing with, playing with more people, you know, multiplayer, gotta love that multiplayer. This is gonna run just fine. So typically you get a lot of lag around here, you know, on the Raspberry Pi, even the Odroid lags a little bit. And here we are. We got two bullets. Why are you running away? Yeah, that's what I thought. And don't forget, this is on a very high resolution here. This is full screened. Where a lot of times people get getting the performance out of the out of the pie they're lowering the res significantly. Ooh. Okay, we can start selecting out of there. Game over. And then we're back in our launch box and let me go ahead and make this cooler here let's go ahead and launch this in I want to see what the this particular image well has Jaguar um, and Jaguar should run but I just want to show you the um, you know the performance of something like this let's just try Bugsy really quick loading loading complete No, I want to do one player. So as you see, that's running just fine. And, um, but a lot of these games should run no problem. Loading. Loading complete. So as you see, I need to activate my windows. That was pretty cool, the segue there. All right, now let's try, since we have the full version, let's go ahead and try Big Box. If you 
are a fan, we don't have to tell you that video games are taking this country by... All right, and then here we are in Big Box. Let's do View Platforms. Pretty dope. You can go ahead and click into a system, and then there you go, you got it. So, if, for example, I wanted to play Judge Dredd, you can go ahead and launch it, watch the video snap on it, change all sorts of things here, click play, should load the game. Retro Arc comes up. Loading complete. Got the bezel. And we're rocking and rolling. I can move my I have my mouse on. I can move that out of the way. And here you are. My uh, Xbox 360 controller auto recognized. Running really great. So I'm not gonna play too much. As I'm gonna start select out. Should say game over here. Okay. And then I can go ahead and stop the music. Play music. Stop music. View the manual. View image. Flip the box, add to playlist, all sorts of stuff. So I can go back and back again, and then go back to the big box area here. And we were showing you arcade games earlier. So this is awesome, right? Imagine this in a cabinet or something like that. It's really responsive because we're running on the PC now. This isn't a Raspberry Pi, so. You get um, that improved performance, not only in the games, but also on the front end as well. I'm trying to find a gr more graphically intense <clears throat> Salamander is a cool game. It's a cool uh, video for that. Um, A lot of shoot 'em games. Simpsons arcade game, classic. None of these games so far have super. Let me see this one. Nope. Splatter House. See, there's like all the. Um, the games you grew up with. Some shooting games. You can have a, a light gun installed. All the Street Fighters run good on the Raspberry Pi and in the. and here as well. Sunset Riders is a lot of fun. I wonder if they have any of the Ridge Racer games. I'm trying to find something that's maybe a little laggier. So far all these games are pretty... pretty okay. There's a lot of them. Uh, Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 plays just fine. All those games play just fine. I mean, Dark Soccer should play fine on both, but just to show you that you know, you should be able to play Killer Instinct on here. A bunch of other arcade games should run just fine. This is an i5 processor. It should run Star Wars, things like that. It's going to run all the Dreamcast games, no problem.
Got him. So the main thing with this build is just to show you... Oh, there's that deer hunting. Maybe that'll be a good... Oh, yeah. Demon front. Play some demon front. Um, let's see if deer hunter runs. I don't have my... Um... Which weapon should we take along? Uh... What? You shot just over the top. That's pretty bad. What? How did I miss that? My aim's not so good. All right, let's just. Is this guy gonna? Do you have to shoot him in the head or what? There we go. It's too small. Does this call it too small? Okay. So, you know, I can add more games as well. Add Killer Instinct. Add some other games. And they'll run just fine. And then all your arcade classics as well is going to run really great. So this is a big box. A lot you could do with it. Launch box. You can see I have, mine's a licensed version. So... License means, I believe, big, you get big box, full screen, and you get access to image and video files and things like that. It's fairly inexpensive and it's worth the cost. But you can also run it with the free version as well. And, um, you know, this build is awesome. I'm really liking this build. This computer is great. Uh, I have two more PC builds. I have a ported Retro Pi, and I have a uh, LaunchBox 2 terabyte build. Um, I'm going to go ahead and try these those on these this exact computer here on external hard drives and I'll do some benchmarking for you um, show you Dreamcast um, and some you know PSP some other systems that won't run on the Pi very well but should be able to run here on some very high settings um, so there'll be a second part and a third part um, that's what I think let me know what you guys think I'll put some links in the description to some of this stuff um, let me know if you have any questions don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll catch you guys on the next one